Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Galatians 6.10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The word of the Lord. Good morning, Grace Presbyterian Church. I've always wanted to do that. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nathan Dahlberg, and I've been a part of this church for 18 years. I've been a member of the Exaltation Choir, all three youth handbell choirs, the associate, and the associate pastor nominating committee. I've also participated in several camps and volunteering events, like just around, you know. And um, when I think of my time at Grace, one word that comes to mind is support. Support has been steadfast throughout many busy years, a global pandemic, and all ups and downs. Even in times when my faith has made its way to the back of my brain, any time I spend at church has been a beacon of light and strength. None of that would be possible without the numerous mentors and role models who have guided me along the way and to help shape and refine my faith. Whether it was Pastor Kara teaching me Bible stories and godly play and worship now, David Hurwitz leading me through my confirmation, or Michael King helping me record auditions for my music schools, no matter whenever I need help, someone is there. Even when I don't ask, I've received it. I, can't, I wouldn't be able to count the numerous times Terry Wade has reached out to me about school or Jack Tavenport has just asked me how I'm doing. It's support like that that will help you grow, that will help you grow in faith as well as a person. When I was looking for a Bible verse to base this testimony on, I stumbled upon this verse in Galatians. I guess he just read to y'all, but I'll read it again. It reads, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. This is particularly evident in our church. There is an emphasis on welcome and community that I, lack, that I haven't seen anywhere else in the world. It, just doesn't include, it doesn't just include someone greeting you at the door or handing you a bulletin. It also consists of big events like Numana or coordinated volunteering events coordinated volunteering at Minnie's Food Pantry and extends into little things like coffee every, coffee every Sunday morning, thank you Mrs. Neeland, and someone inviting you to Sunday school. This sense of community has facilitated growth, not just spiritually, but growth that has branched into other parts of my life, such as music. And church music specifically has become a large part of my life. From, from the numerous programs that are here, it's helped strengthen me. I joined the Cherub Choir in kindergarten and have been a part of it and a part of as many of the groups as possible since. Music, mission, and ministry are the lifeblood of, of this church and it has a great impact not just on those we serve but those who, who serve. The opportunities and support that I have been provided through those opportunities have defined my faith and from there who I am as a person. I will never forget my time serving at Minnie's Food Pantry and seeing the faces of those we served or any of the homeless shelters, food pantries, or retirement homes on choir tours that we have been blessed to serve at. Through my many experiences, I have been blessed with, as, with many mentors who I truly care about, and with as many volunteers that this church has provided, I can't, I'm, unable, I'm unable to shout out every Sunday school teacher, greeter, committee member, and friend that I've been fortunate to meet along the way. But every one of you has a place in my heart. I'm forever, I'm forever thankful to Grace for the community and support it has provided me for the last 18 years and beyond. Thank you. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Hi, I'm Libby, and this is my speech. Standing here as an officially graduated senior, I'm proud and grateful to see all of the memories I've made people I've met, and experiences I've shared in my 12 years in the music program here at Grace. When I look in the mirror, I see myself in my cap and gown, old as ever, but I also see the little girl who loved going to preschool at Grace, the fifth grader who played Mary in the Christmas play, and the rebellious middle schooler who had a talking problem at youth group. <laughs> Every Libby stands before you here, so blessed to share my story. My all-time favorite choir tour memory comes from our tour last summer when we toured through Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City. 
We stopped for a weeknight concert at a church in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, and since it was a more random spot, I hadn't expected anything super popular. I was doing my usual cheesy smile and scanning over the audience as I sang, and I kept making eye contact with the same woman over and over again. After we finished singing, I approached her, expecting the usual small talk, and, but soon we started talking and I was captivated by her exciting stories. She showed me photos of her kids, her grandkids, and her beautiful garden, and she introduced herself to me as Diane. At some point in the conversation, she reached into her purse and handed me a dollar bill folded into an origami harp. She told me she loved my smile so much that she wanted me to keep it. I immediately suggested that I'd share it with my friends, but she was so quick to tell me that it was just for me. She wanted me to have it because she loved my smile that much. Why me? That smile? I knew the smile she was referring to. It's the same one I've always plastered on when singing to an audience. The same smile I'd always been reminded to put on so I didn't look too tired or too bored. For years, I've been smiling this exact same smile, but this time it actually made a difference. It's almost silly to be so touched by such a compliment, but the whole interaction with Diane was exactly what I needed to remember what I was even there for, and that was not to sing, but to bless others, if not with my voice, which is admittedly not very good, <laughs> then with my smile. This story reminds me of my favorite Bible verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.16, which simply says, rejoice always. There is a whole passage which follows this short verse, but this is my favorite part because it is so simple. To me, this verse means to enjoy everything that you do and that we can rejoice and be glad in every single thing that we take part in. My smile at Elkins Park Presbyterian Church was my way of rejoicing without even knowing it. And because I did so, I made a difference in at least one person's life. Even if Diane doesn't remember me anymore, or even if she forgot who I was on the drive home, she left a huge imprint on my life and helps me remember to rejoice always. The opportunities I've had as a member of Exaltation Choir have changed me into the person you see before you today and have taught me so many lessons that I will take to college and beyond. Of course, I've had the privilege to attend five choir tours and very soon six. And on these tours, I've been to countless museums, amusement parks, restaurants, and tourist attractions. But more importantly, I have been to so many homeless shelters, nursing homes, food banks, and donation centers. I don't remember who it was, but one year at Senior Affirmations, one of the seniors did a small speech for us, and in it, they brought to my attention that most kids our age have never even been to a homeless shelter, let alone a food bank or a nursing home. Hearing that there's so many people who are my age who have never even stepped foot in a homeless shelter felt so strange to hear, but the truth is, teenagers do not usually do the things that we have done in exaltation. Our program is so beautifully unique and special, and I am so glad to say I've been to more shelters than I can even count and had the opportunity to touch so many lives. I'm eternally grateful for my entire Grace family and for all my time spent here. And as crazy as it may seem to some of you that I'm old enough to be speaking on Senior Sunday, it's crazy to me too. And to anyone younger than me, take it in. Time really does fly. Grace is a special place and my forever home away from home. Thank you. <laughs>